Hi, Write Writers. Cruz here. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, we are going to be looking at sample essay number two, which also scored a four out of six on the AccuPlacer Write Placer English as a Second Language essay. This essay, again, scored a four out of six. We also had a prompt which discussed basically receiving a large sum of money and what you what would you do with it? Would you spend it? Would you save it? What um, would you invest it? What are some things? Um, would you donate it? What are some things that you would do with this money? So that was the prompt and that references definitely previous videos in this particular channel. If you are interested in looking at why this student scored a four out of six with respect to word usage, sentence use, grammar, organization, and development, this video is for you. If not, <laughs> I have plenty of other videos which may be of interest to you as far as writing an essay, as far as analyzing poetry, as far as writing paragraphs. So there are a few other options for you and as this channel progresses, I can assure you that more videos will um, perhaps be of interest to you in the future, especially if you are interested in writing in English, writing and also analyzing and also you, your usage of grammar as well. So if that's something that, again, overall, you know, you want to improve yourself as a writer, as a reader, as someone who analyzes, or your grammar in general, um, I encourage you to stick around with this channel. If you know of someone who may be interested, hey, pass the word on. Um, I appreciate that. So thank you to all my subscribers for sticking it out with me. And we have almost 140 subscribers, which is great. Let us look at this particular essay. So I first write writers, I like to zoom out first, and then we start to look at it paragraph by paragraph. So that is why the font looks particularly small and you're like I can't read the essay Cruz and I can't read it either so we are on the same page um, but instead what I just want to look at is how the student broke this essay up into smaller paragraphs and I had to sort of do this um, right writers because as you can see it's on two separate pages and that makes it a little bit um, difficult as far as seeing the entire work and zooming out. So that's why I have it here on those two pages. And that's why I also included the circling around it. So if we look at the paragraphs and zoom out, we can definitely see that the student broke this paragraph or broke this essay up into smaller paragraphs, which is fantastic. You want to do that as a writer. Now, as far as how many paragraphs they have, we can see that they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, what's interesting is that this is looks like just a couple of sentences and it's broken off into its own paragraph. Um, and so I'm again, based on how it looks, it looks like this could have been attached to that, and that could be its own paragraph. But maybe when they were putting this together from AccuPlacer, RightPlacer, and the College Board, they made they may have broken it up, and so there's a good chance that this word right here was connected to the previous paragraph. We'll find out more as we read it. But as of now, I'm seeing again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraphs or it could just be six paragraphs. So with that said, right writers, let's go ahead and dig a little bit more closely. Many people would spend all the money to their self if they get a chance to have it. But if I get to have a large amount of money, I will do something different from other people. If I receive a large amount of money, I would save some, but give half of them to my family or to my parents. Okay, so looking at this first paragraph, they definitely discuss the topic, which is fantastic, and they let us know where they're going. And so we know that they're going to talk about um, 
saving some of it. And then they, we also know that they're going to end up giving half of the money to their family or to their parents. So we know the direction in which this essay is going to develop. Now let's take a look at the sentence um, use and the word use, and we'll sort of go a sentence by sentence, which is what I like to do when I look at these um, essays. So many people would spend all the money to their self if they get a chance to have it. So obviously we see some issues with their self. Um, so in this case, and then they do say many people, so they sort of use a sweeping generalization on what the majority of people would do. Um, the sentence itself is a complex sentence. What, again, I don't like is, is the use of, um, of, of a sweeping generalization, just assuming that everyone would just spend all their money rather than doing something different with it. But, you know, and again, the student obviously wants to differentiate themselves from other typical people. Then they move on to the next sentence. But if I get to, if I get to have a large amount of the money, I will do something different from other people. So they do have a couple little, you know, spelling issues here, but that could have just been in the typing. They did not need the but. They could have just said, if I get to have, or if I were to have a large amount of money, I would do something different from others. So they've already mentioned people, so we don't need to say it again. And they also used a, what would be considered a complex sentence. Um, then moving on to the next sentence, if I receive a large amount of the money, comma, they should have had a comma there because it looks like they're leading into a complex. If I receive a large amount of money, no need to put the money because the money makes it specific. So we just want to be general and say, if I receive a large amount of money, I would save some of some comma, but give, but or no comma needed really, but give half of them to my family or to my parents. So they could have said I would save some comma, but I would give half of it away to my family, to my family. So parents are included as part of the family. So it's just a little bit redundant at the end. In addition, they have another complex sentence. So a couple of issues that I have, they have three back-to-back -back complex sentences. That's the first issue that I see. I do absolutely see a direction it, and, you know, I know where they're going for the next paragraph. So that is a positive. Um, I just don't really like the construction of, again, how they started the essay off. It's a little bit... Um, Almost, I mean, the term might be cavalier, but the student just sort of wants to set themselves apart immediately from other people by assuming that the majority of the population, you know, of people would just immediately spend all their money. Um, I take issue with that, but again, that's more of my personal opinion, and I'm just trying to look at it um, from a greater or a scorer standpoint, you know, how, how might they view it. With the next paragraph, then I see the reason why I want to save it is save it is because first I can use them for later. If I have to use the money for buying a present or have to pay for my college money, I can use the money and pay it. That way I do not need to ask my parents for the money and make others think others think that I do not have any money to myself. Okay, so they're giving us the reasons why they would save it, but in this case, that should really be a second sentence, and instead they should say something like, um, you know, the first thing I would do is save it, and then they could say, I would save it because I could use this money later. And then they can give us an example, but in this case, they just say the reason why I want to save it, save it. And they may want a comma there. Save it is because first I can use them for later. So some, it's almost like some words are missing here. So I can use them for later. What can you use for later? The money? We don't really know. So we have a pronoun, but we don't know what that pronoun is referring to. So that's an issue. And then I also feel like, again, 
almost like some words are missing and then it feels like a second sentence rather than a beginning sentence to a paragraph. Um, then as far as the construction, what we see is again another complex sentence. Then moving on to the next sentence. If I have to use the money for buying presents or have to pay for my college money, I can use the money and pay it. So again, uh, another complex sentence. If I have to use the money for buying presents or have to pay for my college, college money, comma, I can use the money and pay it. So they have money in this sentence one, two, three times. And you might say, why are you focused on money, Cruz? Well, because it's said so many times in the second paragraph and also in the first paragraph, now I start counting how many times the student begins to say money. And we are sort of getting lost a little bit. So again, we're talking about buying presents, but then you're trying to save it and um, using it to now pay for college and it's, it just starts to get a little bit confusing. Um, and so when I'm thinking of saving it, you know, I'm not thinking of ways of spending it, which again, what is what the writer is saying. They're going to spend it to buy presents and they're going to spend it by using the money for college. So again, watch out for when you're trying to support an idea, but then you're giving reasons that have nothing to do with the idea. So I definitely take issue with that. Moving on, that way I do not need to ask my parents for the money and make others think that I do not have any money to myself. Okay, instead of saying that, I might say this way, but it's almost like it's continuing the previous sentence. So that way I do not need to ask my parents for the money, comma, or make others think that I do not have any money to myself or for myself. So in this case, and would be the improper conjunction. It would not be the correct conjunction to use. Instead, you should have comma or. The reason why or is better is because you've got two different ideas. I do not need to ask my parents for money, you know, and a, a different idea, make others think that, think that I do not have any money to myself. And the way the student constructed it, it's almost like it needs a comma and the conjunction or rather than the conjunction and. With that said, this sentence um, appears to be more like a compound complex sentence the way it is written. So, so far we have a run of complex sentences and then we have a compound complex. I really don't see any simple sentences and I really do not see any compound sentences yet. So that might be an issue that I would also have um, overall. The third paragraph here it says, second, I can save them for emergency reason. Just in case my house gets on fire or my car gets broke down or somebody steals something from me, I can use the money to get a new house or fix the car or reward a person who finds the thief. So in this case, um, they're giving us reasons why they're saving, and they're saving for emergency purposes. And again, I might argue you could probably just keep that up with this um, paragraph here. They just set it off on its own, um, but I do appreciate the use of transition words. Second, I can save the money. And now we need reference to the money because, again, they're using them, this pronoun them referring to the money. But as a reader, we don't know that. We have to sort of figure that out. And I remind my students many times, do not make the reader do the work. Be crystal clear with the reader and allow the reader to just enjoy what you're writing rather than forcing them them to think about what do they mean by them? I'm not really sure. So that puts work on the reader's brain. And that's what you do not want to do as a writer. Second, especially when you're writing an essay, you want to be clear. 
Um, then they go on, uh, by the way, that is a simple sentence. So yay, this student um, gave us a simple sentence. Just in case my house gets on fire or my car gets broke down or somebody steals something from me, comma, I can use the money to get a new house or fix the car or reward a person who finds the thief. Woo, okay, that is considered a run-on sentence. Now, what's interesting is it did not, they could have used punctuation marks to address the run-on. So they it could have said just in case, two, two words here, just in case my house catches fire, comma, or my car breaks down, comma, or somebody steals something from me, period. So they could have done that. And then the next sentence could be, I could use the money to get a new house or fix the car or reward a person or reward the person who finds the thief. So they could have, uh, you know, constructed this sentence in a few different ways. Instead, they just have one really long run on sentence. And that is hard to say all at once. This is what it sounds like. Just in case my house gets on fire or my car gets broke down or somebody steals something from me, I can use the money to get a new house or fix the car or reward a person who finds the thief. Whew, that is a mouthful. So be careful with those run-on sentences. In what would be considered the fourth paragraph, the student then continues. Third, I can use them for myself. Again, third, I can use the money or could use the money for myself. If I want to go on, go to a vacation, I can use the money for the plane ticket or to pay the train to go to any country that I would like to visit. In addition, I can spend the money for entertainment. Okay, here is my issue with this paragraph. First, they had mentioned that they would not spend the money like many other people. And now they're saying that they would spend the money. So we have what would be considered a contradiction. The student contradicts themselves um, or himself or herself would be better. So the student con contradicts him or herself. And so in doing that, it takes away from the essay as far as the organization and development. But as far as the word use and sentence use, um, you know, not too bad. Um, let's take a look at it more closely. Third, I could use the money for myself. They use them again. So a simple sentence. If I want to go, go to a vacation, so you would say, if I want to go on a vacation, comma, I could use the money for the plane ticket or to pay the train to go to any country that I would like to visit, period, which is what they did. So in this case, they have another complex sentence, um, but again, not too bad. It almost felt like a run on, but they stopped themselves with that comma there. Then they have in addition, which is an excellent transition word. In addition, or really what would be called, yeah, transition words, the two of them together. In addition, comma, I can spend the money for entertainment. Um, or I could spend the money for entertainment, perfectly written sentence, really, um, other than if you could argue the tense, whether they want to be in uh, past tense, present tense, or future tense. But again, perfectly written, simple sentence. Then they go on to their next paragraph. Now, in this case, because they talk about entertainment here, I see this sentence and it has to do, I can already see that it's saying Broadway show. So I can definitely argue that that sentence should go right here and it should be moved. Um, and let's take a look at it. Because again, how they broke it up, it's like, it's as if it's its own paragraph. I always wanted to go to Broadway show. I always wanted to go, I've always, I have always wanted to go to a Broadway show. Um, and then that's a simple sentence. Next sentence. If I get the money, I would take my friends to New York and watch the show. So then I would say, if I get the money or if I receive the money, comma, I would take my friends to New York and watch the show. A complex sentence. Um, but again, because they're referring to entertainment here, this part should really be moved up into this paragraph. 
moving on to the next one. And as you know, students, you should have a comma right there. If I get the money or if I receive the money or if I were to receive the money, comma. Now moving on to the next part. But I would want to give the half of money, the half of money to my parents or to my family. Okay, I definitely get the sense that this is its own paragraph. And really what this sentence needed to do is just be attached up here. And so that's really where that sentence should have gone. Um, moving on to this next um, paragraph here. But I want to give the half of money to my parents or to my family. Because if my grandparents get sick or they get into the accident and do not have enough money to pay the hospital bill, I can certainly help them by giving the money that I have. Also, if one of my family members want to open a store or wants to go to a vacation or to trip with their friends, I can give some money to make them do what they want to do. So I'm reading it aloud, right, writers, and that is a trick that I recommend to my students. If you want to check for grammar errors, read your work aloud. And when you read your work aloud, you're able to catch mistakes more than if you just read it to yourself in your brain. <laughs> so um, just using your mind. So um, that's something that I encourage you all to do, and you will catch more mistakes by doing so. With that said, let's take a look at this paragraph sentence by sentence here. But I want to give half the money, half of money to my parents or to my family. So again, in this case, parents are included as part of the family. So I would say something like, instead of using the conjunction but, I would use the conjunctive adverb, however, comma, I would want to give half of the money to my family. And then they move on to the next sentence, because if my, because if my grandparents get sick, because if my grandparents, you know, were to get sick or got sick, comma, or they get, or they get into the accident, into an accident, and do not have enough money to pay the hospital bill, comma, which they did, I can certainly help them by giving the money that I have. I can certainly help them by giving them the money I have or the money that I have. That is an example, definitely, um, of a compound complex sentence, which is great, but we have some issues with subject verb agreement, you know, where you're using a, and it seems weird because you want, you think, well, grandparents has an S, so this verb should have an S, but in English, it's not like that. Typically, when the subject is plural, the verb almost looks singular because it doesn't have an S. Um, and so just be careful with that, right, writers. Moving on to the next um, part, also, comma, if one of my family members wants to open a store or wants to go, to go on a vacation or on a trip with their friends, comma, I could give some money, I, I could give them some money or I can share my money to not make them do what they want to do, wants to do, but to allow them to do what they want to do. So be careful of that because, again, we're not, I'm making you go on a vacation. I'm making you go on a trip. That is something more of something our parents would do. A lot of times we don't have a choice. We just have to go on a vacation or a trip, and we have to go and must go, and our parents make us go with them. But in this case, that would not be the case. So watch out for that. Um, with that said, this could be an example pretty much of a, um, looks like also if one of my family members wants to open a store or wants to go to vacation or to or on a trip with friends, this is a very large dependent clause. I can give them some money to make them do what they want to do. So another complex sentence here. I was looking at it again, right, writers, to see if it was a compound complex. However, it is not. This is another example of a complex sentence. And again, I did appreciate that they stayed on topic up here um, as far as like helping their family and what they would do. Now moving on to the final paragraph, right, writers. 
Thank you for your patience. Um, most people say, says that a person would do anything to get a money or if they have a money. Okay. Definitely confusing. Um, I sort of the, now I'm a little bit lost. Um, and there's confusion. Confusion sets in for the reader, awkwardly written. And it should say something like most people, um, says that a person would do anything to get money or if they have a money. I sometimes I'm able to kind of figure out what they're trying to say, but I don't really know. I mean, I feel like they're putting a little bit of judgment again onto people. Um, and all I can say is that this is an example of a complex sentence, but I am a little bit confused as far as the idea they're trying to get across with their first sentence of their last paragraph. So I am going to move on to the next one. Receiving a large amount of money would make me think lot of stuff or makes me do lot of things. But if I have a large amount of money, comma, I am not going to have all of them to myself. I am going to share my joy and luck with people that I care about. So again, I will give some to my family so they can help themselves with it and have some for myself and enjoy what I have. Okay, this is really, I think, is lovely. I mean, this is what I would have kept, right, writers? And the rest of it, I would have deleted. I really, because again, even this sentence, receiving a large amount of money would make me think a lot of stuff or makes me do lots of things. This is, would be considered a simple sentence. Um, receiving a large amount of money becomes a subject and then would make me think lot of stuff or makes me do lot of things is very confusing. So these two sentences really become confusing and take away from the writer and even uh, their voice. However, when I look here, I go, wow, we've gotten back on topic here. And maybe the but if is not really needed here and instead said, you know, something like if I had a large amount of money, I am not going to have all of, of it to myself, not them. And they're thinking of money as plural, but it's really money is singular and it would be it. In addition, amount would also be singular and it could also be an it. But in this case, this sentence is again a complex. I am going to share my joy and luck with people that I care about. Love that sentence. It's a great, uh, great complex sentence. Um, and again, it's very clear and concise. Um, and watch out though for tense. Again, this uh, past, present, future. Um, and said, instead, you know, but again, they do say I am, I am, but then they go to I will. So that's the only issue that I see there. Then we go with, so again, I will give some, some to my family, so the, comma, so they can help themselves with it and have some for myself and enjoy what I have. So in this case, you could argue the student created what would be considered a compound complex sentence. And instead of so again, I might say in conclusion, and that would be a better transition, um, needed a comma right here. But overall, I again, I appreciate the last part, and I'm so glad they ended with um, information that was clear, because I think that had they ended with those first two sentences, I think we would have been very confused. The, the ending is the last thing the, student, or the reader remembers. So I remind my students many times that make the last paragraph, again, if you're not going to repeat your introduction, repeating your introduction is by far the safest thing to do. In addition, it's the safest thing to do when you're running out of time. However, if you want to change it up at the end, then just make sure that you are clear and concise and that you do not make any mistakes on your in your conclusion because it's the last thing 
the reader remembers. So with that said, Right Writers, I hope that going through this was helpful and beneficial for you as you address your own Accuplacer Right Placer prompt. You know, you can make some pretty, um, pretty significant um, errors as far as like confusion. <laughs> you can confuse the reader a little bit and still walk away with a four. Um, and so that is um, something that I think could be a positive takeaway from this process. Uh, but with that said, Right Writers, I hope that, again, this was useful, beneficial to you. Um, I wish you success as you take your Accuplacer Right Placer English as a second language, um, you know, essay test. And again, hope it was useful. Thank you so much, Right Writers, for subscribing to the channel for spreading the word to other folks who may be interested in analyzing writing, learning how to write, reading poetry, analyzing poetry, and a host of other topics um, to come. <laughs> so with that said, Right Writers, have a great Tuesday. Hope you all have a wonderful week. Love you guys. Take care. Cruise out. Bye-bye.